Dear brothers and sisters, I share with you a tale of divine intervention and sacred vision, witnessed by the blessed Anna Katharina Emmerich on the solemn day of Good Friday, March 30th, 1820. A vision that brings to light in an extraordinary manner those dramatic moments, revealing entirely new aspects of Jesus' passion. That Good Friday, Sister Anna Katharina Emmerich was contemplating the sacred moment of the descent from the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, when she was overcome by a faint so deep, it seemed she was enveloped by the arms of death itself. Yet, upon awakening, though her sufferings were not alleviated, she uttered these words, with a voice touched by the divine. As I contemplated the body of Jesus resting on the knees of his mother, I said to myself, Look how strong Mary is, not showing even a moment of weakness. Before listening to the extraordinary words that I am sure will touch each of us deeply, I invite you to join our community of faith and prayer by subscribing to the channel. Many of you watch our videos without subscribing, and yet your support is truly important to us. Now let's return to those dramatic moments through the transcription of the words of Anna Katharina Emmerich, thanks to the writings of Clemens Brentano. Let us listen to this most holy vision. I saw the Virgin sitting on the ground on a blanket, with her back supported by some rolled up cloaks. She had her right knee slightly raised, upon which rested the holy head of Jesus his body stretched out on the shroud. The Holy Mother, for the last time, cradled the sacred remains of her beloved son, to whom, during his long martyrdom, she could not offer any sign of her love. She kissed and adored that body, horribly disfigured and bloodied, meditating deeply on his profound wounds and terrible suffering while Mary Magdalene gently rested her face on his sacred feet. Meanwhile, the men had retreated into a small depression southwest of Calvary to prepare the necessary items for embalming. Cassius and the converted soldiers remained at a respectful distance, waiting to offer assistance. John moved between the group of men and that of the women, who passed to the former jars, sponges, linens, ointments, spices, and all necessary items. Among the women, among the women, I saw Mary of Clopas and Veronica. Mary Magdalene was always beside Jesus. Maria, seated, observed the entire scene. Next to the group of disciples, I saw skins, and a vessel full of water placed over a charcoal fire. In her indescribable pain, the Holy Virgin maintained a magnificent presence of spirit. She could not leave the body of her son in such a horrific state, and so began to erase the traces of the outrages he had suffered. With extreme delicacy, she removed the crown of thorns, opening it from the back, and then placed the crown near the nails. Using a sort of round pliers, she removed the thorns that had remained in the Lord's head and sadly showed them to the pious women and disciples. These two were gathered near the nails and the crown. Some were kept separately. I saw the Virgin wash the Lord's bloodied head and face, passing the wet sponge over his hair to remove the coagulated blood. As she cleaned the sacred body of her son, contemplating his many wounds, her compassion and tenderness for the immense sufferings he had endured grew. The Holy Virgin washed the wounds on his head, the blood filling his eyes, nostrils, and ears with a sponge and a small linen laid on the fingers of her right hand. Similarly, she cleaned his half-open mouth, the tongue, teeth, and lips, 
Then the sorrowful mother parted her son's hair into three sections, one for each temple and the other at the back of the head. When she had untangled the hair at the front and made it shiny and smooth, she brushed it back behind the ears. Once the head was cleaned, after kissing her son on the cheeks, she proceeded to clean the neck, shoulders, chest, back, arms, and his tender, wounded hands. The grieving Madonna washed and cleaned, one by one, all the numerous and horrific wounds. Only then could she see, in all the minute details, the terrible torments her son had endured. The bones of the chest and the joints of the limbs were all dislocated and could not be bent. The shoulder bore the frightful wound of the cross, and the upper part of the most holy body was covered with bruises and whip marks. On the left side of the chest was a small wound, from which the tip of Cassius's spear had emerged. On the right side was the large wound where the spear had entered, piercing the heart through and through. Mary Magdalene, kneeling, assisted the Holy Mother, never leaving the Lord's feet. She bathed them for the last time with her tears, dried them with her hair, and placed her pale face upon them, with which, out of respect, she dared not touch Jesus's, the most holy body, which had taken on a bluish-white color because it was drained of blood inside, rested on Mary's knees, who, after washing her son's head, chest, and feet, covered them with a veil and began to apply balm to all the holy wounds. The pious women, kneeling in front of her, passed her a box from time to time, from which she took the ointments and precious balms with which she anointed the wounds of her son. The Most Holy Mary also anointed the hair, then took both of Jesus' hands in her left hand and kissed them with deep respect. Finally, she filled the large holes made by the nails with ointment and did the same with the deep wound in the side. The water that had been used to wash the wounds was not discarded, but was diligently collected in leather skins, into which the sponges were also squeezed. I saw Cassius and the soldiers drawing water from the pool of Gihon. When the Holy Virgin had embalmed all the wounds, she wrapped the sacred head in linens, but without yet covering the holy face. She closed the Lord's half-open eyes, letting them rest on her hand. Then she also closed his mouth, kissed the holy body, and pressed her face to her son's. She was interrupted by John, who pleaded with her to part from her son's body because the Sabbath was near and it needed to be buried. Obediently, she embraced the holy remains for the last time and parted from them with profound emotion. After taking them from her lap, the men carried the holy remains into the depression of Golgotha, where they had prepared everything necessary for the embalming. Left once again to her sorrows, the Most Holy Mary, with her head covered, fell faint among the pious women. Mary Magdalene, as if she had been robbed of her beloved spouse, took a few steps forward with her arms stretched out towards the Lord's body, then returned to the Virgin's side. The Savior's body was laid on a knitted linen cloth. Dear brothers and sisters, the words of Katharina Emmerich lead us to deep meditation on those dramatic and painful moments our Lord suffered for the salvation of us all. Let us meditate on these words and let us know in the comments what you think. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to join our community of faith and prayer. May God bless us all.